I'm Dawn Hammond, president of the ATA, and I'm pleased to welcome you uh, here this evening. Uh, I'm pleased to introduce Joseph Nasinski. Uh, many of us know Joseph well, because in addition to being an ATA member, he is the host of the popular YouTube program, The Eclectic Philatelist. Uh, if you haven't tuned in, please be sure and do that because he offers insights into a variety of topics. It's really a fascinating program. He's gonna share his quote unquote main topic with us this evening. He collects uh, countries, Poland and Japan, but mostly topics. He told me before we got started tonight that he collects lots and lots of topics and he isn't quite sure how many and I'm sure there are some of us that can relate to that. Welcome, Joseph, and we're real uh, delighted to have you and looking forward to tonight's program. Okay, thanks very much, Dawn. I really appreciate that. Uh, thanks for the ATA for doing these programs. They're always uh, a great source of information here. I'm going to jump right in. I'm just going to share my screen here to put this up. And the, the subject is, this is again, as Dawn mentioned, kind of my main topic of collection. It's on accident prevention and safety and stamps as public service messages. The approach here is not really from a collector's point of view, but from a general public, uh, public service messages, trying to get meaningful and important messages out to people that might see stamps in their everyday activities of sending and receiving mail. Now, I'm often asked uh, why this particular topic and how I came about this topic. Um, I'm currently retired, but I was a technical writer for about 30 years. And in that capacity, I worked for companies that did primarily um, industrial automation equipment and high voltage motor control equipment. And I wrote the documentation, user manuals and engineering manuals. And as uh, a technical writer of that type of material, we always had sections in all of our documentation on safety. Accident prevention was a very serious part. Uh, even the company's legal department would get involved. And we were always talking among ourselves, amongst the writers, how do we present accident prevention and safety topics so it can grab people's attention. And in a manual, of course, we had lots of room to do this. But with public service messages going out on stamps, that's a whole different story here. So the focus tonight is going to be on design and what is good design for this type of thing and what is perhaps not so good design. And we're going to take a look at a lot of different approaches to the design for this topic. It varies widely by uh, country and stamp designer. Now, I kind of subdivide uh, this topic a little bit because there's a lot to it. Uh, traffic safety or traffic accident prevention is the largest area. There's most of the material that I'm going to show and most of the material that's out there has to do with traffic safety, but there's also industrial safety and that covers uh, factory accident prevention and safety as well as things like construction site safety and prevention. Uh, there are fire prevention uh, topics uh, kind of separate to this, but a lot of accident prevention uh, material mentions fire prevention but it doesn't restrict itself to accident prevention or safety on land. There's also safety at sea and aviation safety. And we're gonna take a look at examples of all of these tonight. Now, the biggest thing when stamp designers are, are doing this for public service messages uh, is that they wanna get this message out to the public and to have them pay attention to the material that's on the stamp and to take that information with them after they uh, even see the stamp. But there are some challenges to effective design. And on a stamp, we have a very small canvas. I mean, in a manual, when I write that, we had pages and pages of room to do graphics and text. But on a stamp, it's a pretty tiny little bit of 
uh, real estate. There's also a short viewing time. If you think about someone picking up an envelope with a stamp on it, and even though it may have a public service message, how long do they look at that item? They may just glance at it unless there's something that can really attract their attention. There's also distractions. And by that, I mean, sometimes a stamp designer can put too much information on the stamp and we can be overwhelmed. It's just like anything else. If we see any kind of a, um, a document or a, a screenshot of something and there's just an overwhelming amount of material that can be very distracting. But these stamps also have to have some sort of impact so people can uh, relate to the message and remember the message and understand it easily. And there's a lot of different approaches designers have taken throughout many countries to achieve that idea of impact. As an example here, the stamp from Mexico on the screen uh, is for uh, an accident prevention or road safety but there's an awful lot of material on this graphic. Uh, there is a stoplight with, it looks like the red light is highlighted there. There's a crosswalk that has traffic cones. There's a number of different road signs from speed limits and no cell phone use, et cetera, stop sign. The driver of the car has a seat belt and that seat belt is highlighted, but there's a rear seat passenger with a seat belt. There's a child in a, uh, child safety seat. Also, there's a lot on here. So if they're talking about uh, traffic safety, yes, all these elements apply, but could this be too much information on a stamp? Well, we'll see some different approaches and you can be the judge. Now, design concepts. Uh, what got me first interested, the first stamps that I bought was a set of stamps from Germany. They started issuing these around 1971 and continued for quite a few years. They're commonly found, there's a ton of these out there. And what the designers in Germany did for this set to be impactful for the message, they decided to use very simple graphics. Each stamp only emphasizes one topic. Uh, they don't try and combine a lot of information on here. They also use a single color. They also use very minimal text. They didn't want text to distract from it. And if you look at the first one, the uh, denomination of five here, that's a fire prevention stamp. Um, the text on the left side, that all that really means in translation basically is always safe or keep safety in mind. It's nothing specific to the topic display. But here in this fire stamp, it has a big flame and a person with their hands raised in distress uh, in a fire situation, and then a match, a, a burnt match on the bottom. And then, of course, the uh, country name on the right side of the stamp. In the middle one, even, it's just showing a hand. It doesn't even show a full human body, a hand reaching toward a saw blade. We don't know what kind of machinery that saw blade is attached to. We just see a hand reaching toward it, and that could be a sign of danger. Also in the one with the ladder, we don't see what the ladder was being used to climb to. We see a, a single broken lung, rung and a, a person upside down falling off the ladder. So very simple design concept here, but very effective. The single color is effective too. It doesn't distract from things. And one other unusual thing on these stamps, if you notice the graphics are done primarily in horizontal lines over a white background. And when I was researching this little presentation, I found a uh, design journal and was talking about the use of horizontal line drawings. And I've seen horizontal line drawings done even things as complex as portraits. But according to this journal, there's a psychological effect of horizontal lines in drawings that gives a feeling of authority and community and trust and characteristics like this. So trust the message, in other words, you know, this type of thing. So this is a set that kind of got me started. And I'll show some more of these stamps in the set in a moment here. But Again, these are very easy to find, and I wondered if is there other topics or other stamps or even postcards or covers that have to do with accident prevention and safety. 
and there is quite a few. Uh, with this design, again, one of the concepts they used here is uh, to use a graphic as the main tool, the main part of the stamp. Again, they didn't use text to try and describe what was on the graphic. The graphic can be quickly recognized by itself. Uh, for example, the upper left-hand stamp, it shows a bottle and a glass, uh, probably on a table, and then an upside-down car underneath it. And that's uh, quite obvious as to uh, don't drink and drive or you could end up upside down on the side of the road. Uh, the brick falling on a person wearing a hard hat. You know, beware of things falling above from a construction site. Uh, the electrical safety stamp in the lower left shows a frayed cord and the uh, person about to step on a nail or a spike coming through a board. They're all very simple graphics, but very easily recognized, and they do have some uh, impact. You can see these and identify what the situation is fairly quickly. And again, the text on the side doesn't really have much to do with the subject of the stamp. The left side, again, it's just safety at all times. And the German Federal Post Office on the uh, right hand side. Now, there is uh, earlier, I mentioned all these stamps are using a single color. From the collector's perspective, there is an exception. Uh, and again, this is the general public probably wouldn't notice this, but if you look at the um, stamp with the blue car and probably a child bouncing a ball in front of the car, an obviously dangerous situation, the uh, stamp on the top left is just like I said, it's a single color. But in the bottom, you'll see a difference. There's a, uh, the blue color for the car and the ball and the child's hands, but the text and the denomination is in green, not blue. And if you're collecting in this series, that's something to look out for to try and find that uh, very unusual one where they deviated from the single color. And you'll notice on the right hand side also just as a note here, the text on the two stamps above are Deutsche Budenpost or the uh, German Federal Post Office. And the bottom one is Deutsche Budenpost Berlin, which is West Berlin. It's sort of a uh, subsidiary post office in Germany. Now, from a little bit different take on it is East Germany and these four stamps. And uh, again, they tried to rely heavily on text, but they did, or on graphics rather, but they did decide to use text a little bit to help out. So for example, the top right-hand one, it shows a silhouette of a child on a scooter uh, going in front of an automobile, an obviously dangerous uh, situation. And we can identify that, of course, just by the graphic, but they decided to add text under the graphic. And they didn't just use kind of boring text saying, you know, traffic safety or something like this. The English translation of the text underneath that scooter stamp says the street is not a playground. So that text is kind of targeted at the child and its parents, not necessarily at the driver of the stamp. Uh, the bottom right stamp shows a motorcycle. Again, simple graphic relatively. The motorcycle is just a silhouette, has a glass of beer and an ambulance, but the text underneath, trying to use text to be a little bit more impactful, that text says even one glass is too much. Now, these are from 1966. About three years later, East Germany kind of continued the subject of accident prevention with another set of four stamps. And again, the graphics are, are fairly simple. Uh, if you notice, the people are all in silhouette. There's no intention to make a complicated background. In the top left-hand stamp, we so, show a probably a father and his daughter. And that sign in the middle is sort of a, a universal symbol for a crosswalk and then a car approaching. So. The uh, text translates underneath attention to and consideration of pedestrians. And uh, the text continues in that same vein, trying to emphasize what's shown on the graphic a little bit, but sticking with uh, primarily a graphic message and fairly simple graphic design. 
Now, sometimes other countries chose a more elaborate or more creative graphical design here. This stamp is from France from 1981. And there's a couple of things that are unusual about this. One, if you look at the car, uh, it does have or conveys a feeling of motion like the car is speeding. And you can tell that by the, the lines at the rear of the car, the horizontal lines of different thicknesses. Even as a young kid, when I drew cars and you, know, and you wanted to show that the car was going fast, you had these lines off the back of the car, like the car was speeding. Also notice the, the black line that kind of is in an oval that swoops around from the top right at the denomination and swoops around to under the front wheel of the car. Again, that conveys a sense of motion and activity for that car. But then the car, and here's where we get into a mixed element, the car is not hitting a, another car or a stop sign or a pedestrian even, heaven forbid, it's hitting a glass of alcohol. And so that's kind of using topics or graphics to combine mixed elements and have a great deal of impact or to increase the visual impact on the stamp. And then France decided to also use a little bit of text here to help. And the translation basically up at the top is drink or drive, not both. And so overall, a, a very good design for something like accident prevention and preventing of drinking and driving. Now, in contrast, here's another French stamp. And the uh, designer in this uh, took a different tact, I think, and got a little bit more bland, I think. The text on the bottom merely says road accident prevention. Doesn't say much about you know, the signs that are displayed. And the graphic itself is just a series of road signs. Uh, the road signs, except for the stop sign, isn't really identified as anything. So I'm not sure how effective this is for a graphic design for a public service message. Uh, this graphic shows what is to be obeyed, the traffic signs, but it doesn't show what happens if you don't obey these traffic signs. So another kind of take on the graphic design, but not sure how effective this one is. Here's another one that might be even a little less effective. It's from the United States from 1965. Uh, the graphic simply shows a red light on a traffic light, and the text is pretty generic. It just says, stop traffic accidents, I'm trying to uh, you know, go off the red light as stop, and then saying stop traffic accidents. But that's all that's here on this stamp. There really isn't much else. Not sure if this is going to grab a casual viewer's attention and get them to remember uh, anything about accident prevention. This one I really like. This is a uh, another very unique take on the design. This is a uh, relatively new. It's from 2021. It's a French stamp, and uh, it's celebrating a uh, hundred years of road signs and traffic rules and regulations. But what they did here that's kind of unique, the 100 years, the uh, one and the zero and the zero in the main part of the stamp were turned into streets and traffic circles. So the numeral one has a red car on it approaching a crosswalk with a uh, caution crosswalk sign. And the two zeros in the numeral for the 100 uh, have become traffic circles and is showing the various route through the traffic circle and uh, some of the signs, even a caution construction worker sign. So very much a different take on a design of actually combining the text and graphics into one single element. I really like this one. And then of course, messaging. A lot of the ones we saw in accident prevention talk about uh, drunk driving or running stop signs or something like this. But uh, this sheet from Tanzania that I got has two things that I haven't seen on any of the other stamps in the collection so far on accident prevention. And in the top right, it shows a person with a young child in a crosswalk, but the person is in a wheelchair. Kind of an important consideration, because if you're in a wheelchair, you can't really get out of the way of a car that quickly as 
a person that might be able-bodied and on foot. And the bottom right-hand stamp, again, this sheet from Tanzania is the only place I've seen this message. And this message in the bottom right is automobile maintenance. You know, maintain your brakes, maintain your vehicle, and that will help you drive more safely. And I kind of like that they did it here, and I almost wish that other uh, stamps issued on this subject would have remembered that uh, car maintenance has uh, something to do with traffic safety as well. Now back to impact. Uh, when we have a public service message, we want people to notice it and take away the message. We have, want them to have the design to have some sort of an impact. And here on this French stamp, uh, it's showing a shoulder harness uh, being about to be buckled, but a few other elements here that are kind of neat that I like. The uh, buckle of the shoulder harness has a red heart, and it happens to be over the heart on the body behind the shoulder harness. So a nice choice there in design. And the background itself there is actually a road map but I've showed this stamp to a number of different people and they thought, okay, roadmap, but could it also be veins or arteries and showing fragility of the human body if you don't buckle up and use seat belts and shoulder harnesses. So this design was trying to have a little bit more of an emotional impact. This one, one of my favorite, if not the favorite of the collection is definitely a striking graphic, definitely high emotional impact about using seat belts. You see these skeleton hands and forearms, but they are wrapped around with a seat belt. And the uh, text on this particular stamp that goes around both sides is bind death's hands with seat belts. Uh, great job of whoever came up with that text on, on this one. That's just uh, kind of interesting that they uh, did that. Uh, so a lot of emotional impact. This one also uh, from Germany in 1953 has quite a bit of emotional impact. There's a complete reliance on the graphic here. The text in the upper right corner just states prevent traffic accidents. But the uh, warning symbol there, the pyramid-shaped traffic sign, is just a warning, generic warning. And here we're seeing what probably is a mother and a child in her lap who is quite probably deceased. And the mother obviously distraught with her arm over her eyes, probably crying. Uh, kind of an emotional design, a very serious design. Uh, the designers on this one wanted to get across a message and something that people would remember. And I think they uh, probably will. It's a very effective design. Now, with some people seeing uh, depiction of humans in distress, maybe a little bit much. And so some designers uh, went a little bit different way. And here there's a, another one from Italy. And it is showing without using people, but a traffic sign that is showing that um, someone has hit this uh, object. They have uh, obviously uh, had a crash or an accident of some type here. And it uh, looks like a kind of a serious crash. There's a lot of damage to that sign. The graphic again is the primary element in the design. Uh, it's not showing people. Uh, the text isn't really all that important with this one because the text is just uh, road accident. That's all it really translates to. But here's another one from Italy that went back to a, a much more emotional design and emotional impact here. Uh, this one shows a car that's obviously hit a uh, telephone pole or a post and it's been a bad accident. There's a policeman there, but there is a body on the ground and the body is completely covered. And the policeman is even looking away from the body and uh, you can judge if he's looking for ambulances or other police to arrive or if he's uh, disturbed by the image of the body on the ground. 
Now, other ways that countries chose to enter into stamps created for this particular topic have to do with commemorating certain events. For example, this stamp from Greece, these three stamps were to commemorate the European Road Safety Year. And they decided to use three different uh, accident prevention topics for this uh, set of commemorative stamps. The first one on the left is for speed limits, obviously showing a number of different speed limit values. The interesting thing about that one, you can see what's probably a woman it looks like in the car looking back over her shoulder behind the car. And uh, again, this one I've showed other people and it's like, what is she thinking? Is she thinking that we just passed you at a high rate of speed and kind of laughing about that? Or is she looking over her shoulder because there is a uh, police car with flashing lights uh, chasing her down right now? Uh, the center stamp, um, pretty common topic in this area of seatbelt usage, just showing a seatbelt being fastened and the right hand stamp, something that we see all over the world, it can be a uh, definite hazard, is a motorcyclist cutting between a truck and a bus, obviously not staying in his lane because his vehicle is narrow and he thinks he can cut between traffic, a, a very dangerous uh, activity to do. Uh, also, some road safety campaigns, uh, are out there, uh, sometimes on an annual basis. And this uh, set from Cyprus uh, created three stamps. And in this case, what they did, if you look at the design of the stamp, it's very unique because you're not seeing a person on the top cross a crosswalk. It's almost like you are crossing the crosswalk. It's from your point of view, looking down at your shadow and your foot as you're stepping into the crosswalk. Uh, the lower left on the motorcycle, it's like you are on the motorcycle and about to put on the helmet. Always wear the helmet when you're, you know, riding a motorcycle. And even the lower right, it's like you are about to buckle the seatbelt. You see the rear view mirror in front of you. So a different point of view, a lot of stamps uh, show uh, people out there and you're kind of an observer watching them. Uh, this set decided to make you the actual subject of the person crossing in the crosswalk or putting on a helmet. Uh, very different design. I haven't seen this uh, type of design on a graphic in any other stamps. Uh, sometimes stamps are used to promote an organization as well as traffic safety. This is uh, one of the older stamps in the collection. Uh, this is from 1952. This is a US stamp to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the American Automobile Association. And uh, the American Automobile Association, AAA, as we know, it has a, a program called the AAA Safety and Accident Prevention Program. And so on this stamp, they decided to use a school crossing guard to indicate traffic safety and accident prevention. And uh, then kind of as a side note, if you uh, collect cars on stamps as a topic, uh, the stamp does have two cars side by side, one resembling a car from 1902 and one from 1952. Here's another uh, unusual take on the design of making something have high impact. Uh, Israel in 97 went a completely different way from the emotional impact of the stamps that we saw from Italy. Uh, in this case, they took a very comical design to a serious topic. Uh, and that can be very eye-catching. It can be very high impact on these graphics. And the graphics are really well done. Uh, they can make people take a closer look at these and pay more attention if they see these on an envelope. The one on the left shows a driver going right down the center line on a road and looks like he's in kind of a road rage kind of mode here. He's about to run over this red bird that's in panic mode. And the uh, text on the bottom that's in uh, both languages, it says, keep your distance. And you can just imagine if instead of a bird, that was your car in front of this guy that he's about to uh, rear end your vehicle. The center one is my favorite in this group. Um, the text on the bottom says, keep in lane. And this driver looks very surprised that he wasn't staying in his lane and now finds himself submerged in a lake. And uh, 
probably not very happy about that fact that he's now uh, in this lake surrounded by the fish and all the fish if you look at closely at their expressions they're kind of laughing at him or smiling at him that uh, you uh, drove off the road and ended up in a lake oh nice going there buddy but and the one on the right uh, again uh, don't drink and drive type of uh, message here the driver that's drinking as he's driving and looking totally oblivious is about to drive off the end of a cliff so you can use a comical or a more humorous type of approach to these designs, even though it's a very serious topic as well. You know, you don't have to have something that's a very high emotional impact. Here's another idea from Australia. They're using a comparison to make a point here. Uh, this was uh, to sort of commemorate a, an Australian innovation, they call it a baby safety capsule. Um, we call them car seats. And it shows the driver in the station wagon and in the back seat, there's uh, what they would call the baby safety capsule or a car seat. And they're uh, doing the analogy here with the kangaroo. The mother is keeping her baby safe in a pouch. Uh, we should keep our baby safe in a car seat. So kind of a nice a twist on some graphics here, a little bit of humor. People like seeing the animals always. So a nice design. Kudos to Australia on this one. So, industrial safety is also a topic that you find uh, or stamps that have been done for construction sites and industrial sites. And here's a set from Spain showing the type of thing that's often on these stamps. The uh, leftmost one from Spain shows a fire at a factory or a manufacturing plant. And then the signs that are hopefully posted throughout the factory of a fire extinguisher and an exit and a person running toward the exit. And the message, of course, if there is a fire, you should know where fire extinguishers are. They should be well marked. And you should know where the exits are and where exits uh, and how you can get to exits and leave the firefighting to the uh, fire department, if at all possible. The center one shows a construction site, probably uh, something with some height to it. And the construction worker has fallen and has been caught by a net, uh, saving him from injury from hitting the ground or hitting other equipment on the way down. And then, of course, the uh, kind of easily recognized one on the right-hand side, electrical safety, uh, insulated gloves, and uh, proper uh, tools and so forth for electrical safety. So you'll see quite a few of these, not as many as traffic accidents. Uh, the subject of traffic accidents and safety is the uh, has the most stamps, but you will see uh, industrial and construction safety stamps as well out there. Uh, here's some that uh, have very impactful graphics. Uh, this stamp from Luxembourg from 1980. Uh, the text on the bottom of the stamp is just prevention of work accidents. But again, going back to a very impactful graphic, the person dressed in white is reaching toward a piece of moving equipment. Uh, and the hand that's trying to reach out to stop him is in red, uh, red for danger, red possibly even for uh, blood. So a very impactful design on the graphic, uh, preventing this man from reaching into moving equipment moving machinery that could be highly dangerous. And uh, nice use of color here for that red hand. It really stands out on the stamp. And Luxembourg kind of continued the same idea with a, another set uh, for the same series of prevention of work accidents. This one from a foundry with molten metal. And you can see the worker sort of leaning away from the molten metal as it's being poured. But what uh, the designer did in the center of the molten metal added a skull floating in that molten metal and uh, kind of another uh, very impactful, almost emotional design idea here for this stamp. Now, sometimes uh, we can get stamps for accident prevention and safety that are kind of act, uh, location specific. We saw a lot of generic ones from around the world. But here there's a strip from Tonga. And uh, don't be distracted by the center one. The center one, this is a uh, 
uh, progressive proof strip that I acquired. You know, notice it doesn't have the name of the country and any of the other text on there. It's just for uh, uh, proof purposes. But the two stamps on the left and the two stamps on the right are the same, but the two on the left have the titles, the text in English. And uh, the ones on the right are the same graphics. It's just the native Tonga language. But notice this is very specific to an island nation. Uh, the first one up here on the left-hand side, I mean, it's listen to forecasts. It's got a little transistor radio and it looks like a sailboat is out to sea when the storm is coming. You don't wanna be trapped out there at sea could be very dangerous. And then on that same stamp, they do uh, a second uh, message and it's learn to swim. And you're seeing someone diving into the water to try and rescue someone calling for help. And then on the second stamp from the left, uh, there's uh, a picture of the uh, water off of from the island and you see the fins of sharks swimming around in the water. So be sure to swim from safe beaches, you know, beware of uh, dangers from things like sharks. And also on the bottom, beware of broken glass. There's a sign posted here, danger, but you know, you wouldn't want to be walking down a beach and encountering broken glass all over in the sand. So accident prevention and safety messages don't necessarily have to be, you know, traffic related or things like this or generic across many countries. It can be specific to what you might see at an island nation. Uh, Kenya did something uh, a little bit like that as well. These uh, stamps from Kenya, especially uh, the one in the upper right. The one in the upper right, the text that says overloading is dangerous and it shows a vehicle with people hanging off of the vehicle and it's probably jam packed inside and a lot of material on the roof of the vehicle. And uh, this one had kind of a, a personal uh, message or remembrance to me. It's like many years ago for one of the companies I worked for, I was assigned to go down to Mexico. The American company had just moved a factory down there and I was helping them uh, do their, set up their testing for quality assurance. And there's all kinds of American factories down in Reynosa, Mexico. And as I was going there for the first day, I noticed these school buses that had the roofs cut off and all the seats removed from the school bus. And they were picking up just as many workers as they could pack into the vehicle to take them to work at these American factories and uh, pretty dangerous situations with that many people packed into a vehicle. Also on the bottom here, the Kenya stamp has to do with railroad crossings and it doesn't look like there's any crossing gates or many railroad signals here, and often in poorer countries too, uh, those locations, they might have not have the funds to have a lot of safety equipment and indicators. And so you know, as a driver, you're kind of on your own trying to you know, pay attention to what's happening here. Now, again, I mentioned earlier at the start of this, there is also safety in the air and safety at sea. And, Aviation safety, obviously because aircraft, commercial aircraft and others may be flying across the ocean and international territory uh, comes under the purview of uh, the United Nations. And these two are United Nations issues uh, for the International Civil Aviation Organization. And they had a campaign about safety in the air. And what these stamps are depicting by the uh, black lines uh, behind the aircraft that are going opposite directions is that these aircraft will not collide because they are at different flight levels or at different altitudes. And if you're going in different uh, compass directions, you're gonna be at different flight levels for safety. Now, for aviation safety, for the number of stamps in this topic, there's very few. I'm only showing tonight um, stamps that are in my collection. Uh, there are a couple of other stamps that I found that I don't have yet that are showing similar images, but uh, aviation safety is something I'm still in the search for to find more elements on this particular uh, part of the topic. 
Now, of course, there are postcards and uh, covers and things like this that will have these stamps on it and will show related graphics. This goes all the way back to the first stamps I showed from Germany with that very simple, nice design. But here on the cover, they have a, an electrical cord that almost looks like a snake. So you'll find things like this as well. And for that German set that I showed in the first couple of graphics, there are covers for almost in every stamp in that series that you can find out there. If you're into collecting covers, it's um, something you can look for, pretty easy to find. Uh, this is one of my favorite items also, kind of on another topic. This is on carbon monoxide safety. And I've never seen any other stamps on carbon monoxide safety. And what's unique about this and what I love about it, Argentina had a contest for school children to come up with the stamp design and the graphic on this cover. And so young school children came up with all this as they were taught about the importance of carbon monoxide safety. For example, the upper right-hand stamp shows two houses. The one in the left where it says no has their chimney blocked by a bird's nest. So fumes and exhaust that would be going up a chimney is not going to do that. And the one on the right that says C or yes has a clear chimney. You can see the smoke coming out of the chimney. The top left-hand stamp shows someone in a rocking chair and it looks like he's barbecuing indoors. Well, probably a bad idea for carbon monoxide poisoning. And the kids design these stamps and also on the cancellations on the bottom on the right-hand side, you can see a cancellation with looks like a, a stove with an evil looking face on it and someone in bed and probably being overwhelmed by carbon monoxide fumes because there's no ventilation in there. And then on the uh, left hand side, the two figures that are running, it looks like uh, the figure in black has a skeletal face and a CO label on the chest and that's for carbon monoxide. And the figure chasing her that's smiling uh, the sign on her chest says ventilation. So we want proper ventilation for uh, to prevent carbon monoxide poisoning. So sometimes you can come across unique items like this. Again, this is the only thing I've seen that emphasizes uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. Kind of neat, kind of unique here. And of course, there are other covers from all around the world. Uh, these Canadian stamps are just showing uh, road signs and things, but I have this one because I kind of like the hands that are uh, supporting the bicycles. You know, with the phrase safety is in your hands, kind of a nice way to use a graphic to depict that message of uh, promoting highway safety. And there are Cinderella's out there. I stumbled across this one by accident. There was there's actually an organization called uh, something like the Poster Stamp Collector's Society. And uh, with them, they found this little uh, poster stamp, this little label, it's about the size of a uh, average stamp that was issued for the New York City Police Department. And the New York City Police Department was giving these away free and to try and promote uh, safer driving and accident prevention. And you could stick these on envelopes or anywhere else that you uh, thought might be appropriate. And the graphic is uh, kind of emotional here. You have someone that looks like they're all in white, probably a doctor saying, I'm sorry. And the woman in black, probably a widow, saying, I begged him to be careful. And then the text beneath, beneath says, drive carefully and cross carefully. So did a person not drive carefully? And hit a pedestrian who wasn't paying attention, crossing carefully. We don't really know, but uh, obviously someone uh, did not make it here through a bad accident. Also, uh, a couple people have asked me on this one if they, when I showed it to them on that door behind the doctor, it's got a kind of a red door and there's text on that door that looks like it says the too bad ward. So uh, take that any way you want, but too bad. That, there was an accident here, I'm not sure about that one, but, but you can find uh, things like this that aren't necessarily, that aren't stamps, but Cinderella's, but they are kind of neat and fit into the collection. 
This was another one that was designed specifically for the topic. This is a French postcard. And there's a group in France called the Responsible Young Drivers that they try and have campaigns, especially for new drivers who are young to think about traffic safety. And they chose this graphic of a, a brain sitting on a table next to a glass of probably alcohol. And the text at the bottom of the postcard says, you drive, you think, or uh, think about what you're doing before you drive. There's a post-it note on the brain itself. The symbol on the top is a standard kind of European warning symbol. And then the translation is, do not forget before taking the car. Uh, an approximate translation. Uh, don't drink and drive. Use your brain, or your brain could end up, I suppose, separate from your body here, maybe on a, or on a table somewhere. But kind of a, a neat thing, and designed again by this group, Responsible Young Drivers, as part of a campaign to teach uh, young drivers about traffic safety. Uh, this is another kind of unusual one. This is from the uh, small nation. This is from the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. And this took a bit of a research. Uh, the two stamps are kind of self-explanatory. The stamp on the right is a road sign for a pedestrian crossing that's been knocked over. Obviously, someone uh, didn't pay attention and, uh, you know, crashed into that. The other stamp shows a stoplight, but a clever design. They show a a silhouette of an eye around the uh, red light. So keep your eyes on the red light. Uh, take a look at that. It's uh, important. And the symbol on the left-hand side of this cover, uh, I had to ask around this. And I, a lot of other people that I had met online, uh, somebody came into this one and gave me a little bit of an explanation of what this was meant to be. This shows a whole bunch of bombs. And in the Behind the bombs, there's a silhouette of an automobile, looks like a Volkswagen Beetle. And I was told that this is meant to symbolize that traffic accidents kill more people than war. So a very moving and very impactful message on this particular cover from the uh, relatively obscure country of the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. And of course, just like we had aviation safety, there is safety at sea. And again, because it's international waters, uh, the United Nations issues a lot of stamps for the subject. And this souvenir card is from the United Nations showing various stamp issues for safety at sea. I also have all these stamps as individual stamps, uh, but some of these like the right hand lower stamps uh, showing a ship approaching a buoy and as I was researching this, I never realized how many different types of buoys there are out there in the water. Everything from navigation buoys to warning buoys to survival uh, buoys. It could be an entire topic in itself. The uh, life preserver shown in the stamps, the center of the life preserver, kind of a, a neat idea for a design. They show a radar screen. So a radar screen that would show obstacles that as the ship approaches. That's kind of a, a neat idea. And then of course, you know, the upper left uh, communications uh, to ships at sea uh, via radio and things to uh, let them know uh, what's kind of bad weather and things like this. And the lower left it shows ships and different wavy lines underneath it. And that has to do a little bit with uh, uh, a card that I'm coming up in the next slide here, but it has to do with uh, the depth or how far a uh, ship can, um, what kind of depth it can handle depending upon its load and how well balanced it is. So sometimes for looking for things like safety, if you're looking for safety at sea or aviation safety, um, check the United Nations. They often have a lot of material on this. And this is something that is kind of a prized part of my collection. Uh, this is from Great Britain. This is a uh, to celebrate the or to uh, commemorate the first day issue of four stamps from Great Britain that have to do with safety at sea. Uh, this card is huge. Uh, it's uh, 10 inches by 13 inches. 
it shows the four stamps, but the graphic above it is artwork that was um, custom requested from a British artist. And it's showing a ship capsizing and a British rescue boat and uh, the team on board trying to do their best to uh, do whatever rescue that might be possible for this ship. It's just an excellent, uh, very powerful graphic. On the right hand side, I blew up the uh, four stamps so you can see these. And uh, the upper right is showing lighthouses and uh, the importance of lighthouses in ship safety at sea. And it's got a little bit of a map in the bottom half of that stamp with the lighthouse. So if people are collecting maps on stamps too, that could apply there. The uh, upper left hand stamp is showing one of the British sea rescue boats. And there's a whole history of how those were designed, as well as various uh, flags that can be used. The bottom left is uh, satellite communication to ships at sea. And the bottom right again is buoys. And the cancellation was kind of unique and it took a little bit of research because I had no idea what it meant. The cancellation says uh, the Plinsol line, and then it has a circle with a horizontal line and an L and an R and a date underneath it, and then a, a vertical line on the right with uh, different letters on it. And I had no idea what this was. And I checked into this and I managed to find a definition. The Plimsoll line is a reference mark that's located on a ship's hull about midships. And that indicates the maximum depth to which the vessel could be safely immersed when fully loaded with its cargo. And that depth varies with a ship's dimensions, the type of cargo, even the time of year, and the water density that's encountered in the port or on the seas where it's going to travel. It's up to the ship's captain to determine all these factors and then uh, determine the appropriate plimsoll line for the ship. That vertical line on the right with those letters, uh, things like TF, it's a little bit obscured by the stamp, but the top one is a TF. That stands for tropical fresh water. Uh, the F is fresh water. The T is tropical seas. S is the season for summer. W for winter. WNA is for winter North Atlantic. And the horizontal line in the circle is to show uh, if the ship is well balanced or not with its cargo. And the L and the R do not mean uh, left and right. Those letters will vary. They indicate the registration authority. In this case, uh, it was for the American Bureau of Shipping, or not in this case. In, uh, in this case, it was Lloyd's registry. Uh, in my research, uh, it said things like American Bureau of Shipping will have an A and a B and things like that on here. But uh, a large card uh, for the first day issue of these stamps, uh, the custom cancel, a lot of information here, a lot of things to learn about this. And the back of the card had a uh, long text explanation of all of this. And I know you can't read all of this, but it, uh, the text on the back of this gives a little bit of history of safety at sea from uh, Great Britain's perspective. They talk about development of lighthouses and even uh, the fact that lighthouses go all the way back to uh, Alexandria and Egypt. Um, also lists different navigation uh, lights and the importance of those. Talks about uh, rescue boats and how lifeboats and rescue boats were developed uh, in England. And uh, gets into how they're used now. Gets into a, uh, more about safety ideas that they've had in Great Britain, including self-writing model lifeboats and things like this that wouldn't get swamped. And then the last paragraph talks about the artist that did that uh, great graphic of the uh, capsized ship and the rescue boat. And that artist, to give him credit, was Brian Sweet. Uh, he studied art in London and worked for advertising agencies and is now a freelance artist in London. And he was commissioned to do this uh, illustration. So. Lots of stuff for accident prevention and safety for these public service messages and lots of different approaches to this particular topic. 
and a couple of postcards I found at a local postcard show to kind of end the presentation here. I also have my email here on this slide if for any questions or if people want to uh, contact me about this particular topic. <laughs>